Hey, what's up guys? My name is Frozen Fractal, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a professional looking logo for your YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be using Pixlr, a completely free piece of software that you can run directly from your browser. Now, some of you might know that I uploaded a similar video about a year ago. However, Pixlr has undergone a lot of changes since then, and I keep getting comments on my videos talking about how their version of Pixlr looks different to mine, so I thought it would be a good idea to make an updated video for you guys. Alrighty, without further ado, let's get right into it. To begin with, you're going to want to go to Pixlr.com and select Pixlr E. Once you're here, you're going to want to click on Create New. Here, you can change the dimensions of your logo. You can really use whatever dimensions you want, but I would recommend going with something like 1000 by 1000. Then you can enter a name for your project. It doesn't really matter what you choose, so I'm just going to use my logo. And just make sure your background is turned off so your logo is transparent and then click on Create. Alright, so the kind of logo we're going to be designing today is based on a single letter, generally the first letter of whatever your YouTube channel name is. It's very simple to make and can look very professional if done right. So to do this, we're going to want to go to thefont.com. Here you can browse through thousands of different fonts that are completely free by the way, and you can use whichever one you think looks best. So here at the top, you can select a specific category. I'm going to simply go with Techno. Then simply find a font that suits your needs. I really like the look of this font, so I'm just going to click on Download. Once it's downloaded, open your Downloads folder and drag the zip file to your desktop. Then right-click it and click on Extract Here. Go back to Pixlr, select the text tool, and click anywhere on your screen, and then click on add. Here you can enter whatever letter you want to use for your channel. As an example, I'm just going to use the letter G. Then you're going to want to click on your fonts, and click on add local fonts. Then go to where you extracted your files, most likely to your desktop and select the file that ends with .ttf. Once that has been imported, your font should appear at the very top. Select it, and there you go. The letter is still quite small, so I'm going to increase the size until I think it looks good. Then center your letter in the middle of your project. Make sure the letter isn't too big, since YouTube cuts off a good chunk of the sides of your image when you upload it. Now, if you want to go with a more minimalistic approach, you can simply leave your letter as it is right now, and maybe change the color to something else like white, which you can do up here. However, if you want to add a texture overlay to your letter and make it a little bit more unique, I'm going to show you how to accomplish this right now. So, you're going to want to go to Google and type in texture. Go to Images, and then select whichever texture you think looks good. I'm going to go with this one right here. Right click it, and click on Save Image. Then simply drag it into your project, and click on Add Current. Now it might be the case that your texture is far larger than the dimensions of your project. If this is the case, you're going to want to click on your image and decrease the dimensions to whatever the dimensions of your project are. So in my case, about 1000 by 750. Then position it so that it covers the letter entirely. Then select the letter, go to the magic wand tool, select it, right click it, click on invert selection, then select your image, go to edit, and click on Cut. Now, as you can see, the texture has been applied to the letter. Once you've done this, you can either delete the underlying letter or simply uncheck the visibility like so. Now, at the moment, the logo still looks a little bit flat, 
but don't worry, we're gonna make it look a whole lot cooler in just a second. Now we need a background image. Go to Google once again, and type in the type of background you want. Just make sure it isn't too detailed as to not detract from your letter. I'm going to go with a galaxy background. I really like the look of this image right here. So once again, I'm going to right click, save the image, and then drag it into my project. And of course, click on add current. Now, like before, decrease the size to whatever amount is necessary for your image and drag the background layer underneath your letter, like so. Now we're going to change the color and hue of your logo. So click on your background image, go to adjustment, and click on hue and saturation. Here you can adjust the hue, saturation, and lightness of your background image. I think this looks good, so I'm going to hit apply. Now we can do the same to the letter. Go to adjustment, hue and saturation, and adjust it to your liking. If your texture was colored white, like mine was, you might realize you can't really change the color of your logo. For that, you're going to have to click on colorize. Then you can change the hue, saturation, and lightness to your liking. I think this looks pretty good, so I'm going to hit apply. Now I'm going to add a drop shadow to the letter. Select your letter, go to filter, and click on drop shadow. Here you can adjust the opacity, blur, and X and Y offset of your drop shadow. And once again, hit apply. I think the logo still looks a little bit flat, so we're going to add a bevel to the logo. Click on your logo, go to filter, and click on bevel. Here you can adjust the size and depth of your bevel. And of course, hit apply. I think the color of the letter is still a little bit bland, so what you can do is go to adjustment, click on vibrance, and just up that to your liking. One thing you can do to make your logo stand out a little bit more is go to adjustments, click on highlights and shadows, and then adjust these settings to your liking as well. Another effect we can add to the background is a vignette. To do this, simply go to filter and click on vignette. I still think the letter doesn't stand out enough from the background, so what we can do to fix this is click on the letter, go to adjustment, and click on brightness and contrast. Then increase the contrast until you think it looks good. Another cool effect we can add to the letter is an outer glow. To do this, click on your letter, go to filter, and select outer glow. So click on color and then select the color of your logo. Just click anywhere on it, and then you have the same color. Click on OK, increase the feather percentage to 100, lower the opacity, and then increase the size. And as you can see, this adds a cool little glow effect to the outside of your letter. Alright, so one last thing we can do to make the letter really pop is add a glamour effect. So select your letter, go to filter, click on glamour, and then increase this setting to your liking. Alright, so at this point we're pretty much done with our logo. However, there are still some cool effects you can apply to your image if you wish to do so. So the first effect is kind of a glitch effect which you can apply to either your letter or your background. So simply select it, click on filter, click on glitches, and select interference. Here you can change the seed of your interference, um, and then you can adjust the amount right here. And of course, you can also apply this to your background. Another cool effect we can add is a Gaussian blur. 
you're going to want to add this to your background. So select it, click on filter, click on details, and select Gaussian blur. Then you can increase this amount to your liking. And as you can see, it simply blurs out the background. Another cool effect you can add is scan lines. So select your background, click on filter, glitches, and then scan lines. And this kind of adds a cool little VHS uh, retro effect. One more thing you can add to your background is a fringe. So go to filter, click on glitches, and then fringe. And of course you can adjust the amount to your liking. So once you're happy with your logo, you can go to File, Export, and then Quick Export Page as PNG. Save it, and there you go. Now you have your very own logo you can use for your YouTube channel. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you enjoyed this tutorial, consider leaving a like. It really does help out the channel. But for now guys, I will see you in the next video. See ya!